And now we will be okay. <laughs> Sorry. I'm really honored to introduce the recipient of a Fields Medal, Professor Andrei Okunko, who will deliver a public lecture at the 8th European Congress of Mathematics entitled Lead Theory Without Groups. Professor Andrei Okunko is a Russian mathematician who works in mathematical physics and neighboring areas of representation theory and algebraic geometry. Enumerative geometry lies at the crossroads of all these fields of mathematics, and a lot of Okunko's recent work focuses on K theoretic generalizations of classical questions in enumerative geometry. Andre Okunkov is a professor at the Columbia University in the city of New York, at the Skoltech and at the High School of Economics, both in Moscow. His previous positions include the University of Chicago, University of California, Berkeley, and Princeton University. In 2004, Okunkov has award, uh, was awarded an EMS prize for his work at contributed great, uh, greatly to the field of asymptotic combinatorics. In 2006, at the 25th International Congress of Mathematicians in Madrid, he received the Fields Medal for his contributions to bridging probability representation theory, and algebraic geometry. In 2009, he was awarded the Compositio Prize. In 2018, he delivered public lecture at the International Congress of Mathematics. He is a member of the US National Academy of Science, a member of the American Academy of Arts and Sciences, and a member of the Royal Swedish Academy of Science. He is a member of the Executive Committee of the International Mathematics Union. He organized a large number of conferences, workshops, and special programs. He is a member of the Executive Organizing Committee of the 2022 International Congress of Mathematicians and co-chair of the local organizing committee of the 2022 International Congress of Mathematicians. He's also a member of both the Russian and the US national committees. He is a longtime super supporter of the Mathematical Sciences Research Institute uh, in Berkeley. Uh, first as a member and then chair of the Scientific Advisory Committee, and then as a member and vice chair of the Board of Trustees. Other advisory and trustee board memberships include the Clyde Mathematics Institute, uh, Packard Foundation, Simon Center for Geometry and Physics, Hamilton Mathemat Mathematics Institute, and others. He served as the editor of a number of journals, including the Journal of the American Mathematical Society. For us, Professor Okunko prepared a lecture entitled Lead Theory Without Groups. Andre, please, the floor is yours. Well, thank you so much, Claudia, for uh, reminding me of my many duties. <laughs> and maybe I wanna. I got... Maybe I want to return the favor a little bit by, by. Uh... You can hear me even here. Oh, that's too bad. So maybe I'll try to return the favor by, uh, by saying how much I. So the, our, our job as mathematicians is not only to advance our science, but also to develop, I mean, and the goal of this public lecture is to, to develop public understanding and public appreciation of mathematics. And I want to salute the organizers of this ECM and the, uh, and the University of Primorska 
and uh, Cloud is very much at the center of the intersection of the two sets for their effort in, in this in this direction, and to which I'm very happy to contribute with, with this lecture. It's a public lecture, as I um, remind everybody, so it's supposed to be really, really general. So you probably will be able to see my slides. Okay, so they are. And so if you're, uh, if you're bored or if you're lost, there is a uh, there is URL you can you can go back and forth in the back and forth in the slide, and also if I don't get to the end of my talk, then you can also find out what happens in the end by by going to this address. And now, so eventually, in this our goal in this talk is to talk about E theory without group, but maybe it's good to uh, remind ourselves what start by reminding ourselves what is a group. I mean, I'll try to for the people in the audience here. And, I'll try to move this. and so, mathematical notion of of a group uh, is is abstract symmetries of real world things. And uh, I think you all seen, probably most of you seen, a tennis player examine and sometimes reject a tennis ball. So, not to say all tennis balls are the same, but I've never seen a hockey player reject a hockey puck. So, it must be the case that all pucks are exactly the same, and so if we take the two and permute, that is a true symmetry of the world. The world has not changed if I permute two hockey pucks. And this, this transformation have the property that you can compose them, if you permute them, then you permute them again, so that there's a, there's a composition which you can, which you can uh, represent graphically by following these, two, uh, these arrows in succession. And also for every such symmetry, there is an inverse thing that says, how do, how do I undo what I did? And that is, uh, and so this, this two operations make a set a group, and they set a financial axioms, which maybe we won't, we won't discuss today. And many surprising facts about the object can be learned from the study of, of their symmetry group. And maybe a very, very classical example is, uh, is Galois theory. And what does it say? It says that if I have a general equation of degree five and higher, I cannot solve it in radicals. But in one of the maybe, maybe the most famous statement. And what does the group what does the group theory has to do with this statement? Is that if I have a general equation of degree say five, this coefficient A, B, C, D, whatever, then then all roots of this equation will be five of them or more degrees higher. They're indistinguishable as far as the as far as the algebraic property. You can't really tell one of them from the other. There's some there's, there's a there's some there's no way to Say which one is the first, which one is the second, which one is the third, and so forth. All permutations, so they're like hockey puck. All permutations of the truth are the same. And so therefore, any formula that uh, that gives solutions has to have this permutation symmetry. So, uh, but uh, but the basic group theory fact says that if I take permutations of half or more elements, they uh, they complex enough that they not admit for any form formula and radicals that. Um, that have the, the full permutational symmetry. So that's, that's, a, that's a very quick version of, the, of this very classical fact. And now symmetries, they can be discrete or can be continued. Now, discrete means what? So if I take I have two hockey parts and I start permuting them, when I started, when I just started, this, the world is, has changed. They have moved. The world comes back to its original state only when I, only when I come, when they come back to where they were. Whereas if I want to, Rotate. If I want to rotate the puck, that's that is it's very very has a it, it's continuous. It's a very small, a very very arbitrarily small element. It is a symmetry. And so this is so this is you can imagine that. We, so we can talk about some geometric shape, some continuous set also being a group, and a, and a group which is also geometric shape or mathematicians say manifold. That is the definition of what is a Lie group. And so we've just seen. We've just seen uh, the simplest Lie group, namely the group of rotations of of um, of, a, of a puck or rotations of a two-dimensional plane. That is um, that is, uh, and they're obviously parameterized by an angle. An angle is a, is a number, but it, it, it's the same number if we add two pi. So it's it's you can think of this as a, so that number is is either sitting on a circle or sitting on a line, which we then wrap around the circle with two two pi. So this is this this line wrapping around a circle. That's a, that's our first that's our first example of a Lie group. 
and that's a, as, as a geometric shape, as a manifold, that's a one-dimensional sphere. So in general, a sphere is um, is uh, is the set of vectors of unit norm in some dimensional space. So here we talk about the vectors of unit norm in a two-dimensional space of the sphere, and that is also represents rotations of 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 a uh, puck or of a plane. And the rotations of an n-dimensional space, there uh, there is mathematical notation for them. It's called S O N. And so we've just established the very basic fact that S of two S O S O two means rotation of a two-dimensional space. That's a that's a, that's a circle. And the circle has a great advantage over the other geometric shape that it's very easy to draw, or with some training, it's easy to draw. And in this talk, I will be drawing, be drawing spheres of arbitrary dimensions as as uh, as circles. And here we have a in this picture on the other side, we have a, a hoop, which is a one-dimensional sphere. We have a gimbal, which is a two-dimensional sphere. They be all represented by just a circle in my drawing. And then I could try to draw. I mean. The same picture will represent a three-dimensional sphere, but if you want a fun geometric image to go with the three-dimensional sphere, you can take something that's called hope vibration of S3. And that is the picture over there. We'll come back to it later. This one I just I just Googled it. I found a very pretty one. In fact, it's a video, it's a very pretty video by now Johnson. And so I inserted it here. So you can it's it hope vibration is a very beautiful picture. We'll, we'll come back to it later. And so um and since we're on this kind of exercise, we're, uh, we're kind of I, I, I have this exercise theme on this on this on this photo. It, they have an exercise for you to prove that a two-dimensional sphere cannot be made to group in a, in a, in a continuous way. And if you're done with this exercise, you can you can try to prove that only spheres of dimension one and three can be made. Group. No, four, five, all all of that are not cannot be made. So that's uh, there's no there's no group law on this on n dimensional sphere unless it's one unless it's a one dimensional sphere or, or three dimensional sphere. Okay. Those are good. One is easy. One is maybe a little harder. And so then the next after rotation of a two dimensional space, we can talk about dimension of a three dimensional space or rotation of a or rotation of a of a of a, of a unit bolt. I believe uh, we can talk about that. And the way to visualize it, well, every rotation of a three-dimensional space has an axis, as we learned in basic geometry. And then if we if we take that axis and imagine a point on that axis that that, that tells us that there's the angle of rotation, which we will take it to be minus pi to pi, so this will fill a second from minus pi to pi, except, <laughs> except the rotation by pi and the rotation by minus pi aren't the same. So if we take this 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 unit ball that fills so unit ball we can represent in polar coordinates as an axis and, and, and a point on that axis. And so this is represent rotation and the angle of rotation. And then uh, when we get to the surface of that ball, then the rotations by pi and minus pi, they're also the same. And so therefore we have to take that ball, solid ball in three space, and glue the opposite point. And that is the same if you take, so this is this is a famous geometric shape with three-dimensional projective space. And you can get the same one if you um if you uh if you take a three-dimensional sphere and identify the opposite point. So I don't have a three-dimensional sphere, I have this, I have this other hidden here, which has a very interesting group of discrete symmetries, but but you can imagine if you want, well, maybe I'll I'll, I'll use my hand, that if you want to glue the opposite point of a sphere. You might as well just take the northern hemisphere, and then on the equator you glue the opposite. Point. So, so gluing gluing the opposite points on the sphere is the same as take a ball and glue the opposite the opposite points on the surface of that ball. So that is rotation of three spaces. This is this geometric thing. And then I told you already that the three dimensional sphere is a group, and in fact, it can be realized as a group of matrices. And in fact, it's true that you know, this is um, this this old joke uh, we we learn in the school that all all uh, continuous functions are differentiable except the finite many points, except those functions that specifically um, may, are specifically made up and mostly repeated. But so it's like it's like this with the Lie group is uh, is mean all Lie groups can be written by as a group of matrices except those that come up on tests in Lie group plus. So that's a uh, 
it, it's not exactly true that you can write every league group as matrices, but most of the like set very, very, it's very hard to find an example that you cannot. And in fact, the three dimensions here you can write is just a group of two by two unitary matrices with determinant one. And what does it mean, unitary? Unitary means that this matrix G times the remission conjugate, and the remission conjugate is defined in that formula. That is identity. That's a, that's a, and that, uh, this, this stands for U, the notation F U, U stands for unity, and F stands for determinant one. And so then you, you, you look at this equation and you realize the solution is given, is given in the form, in explicit form as I have learned before. And the condition that the determinant equals to one is the condition that sum of squares of this EI is equal to one. And so this EI parameterize a, a unit sphere in the four dimensional space, so it's a three dimensional sphere as, as exactly as we want it. And in fact, the map from the three, so we, we decided that real projective three space is you take the sphere and you identify the opposite points. Well, you can make this map to be a map of groups. And namely, the way you do it is you take, you take the three space, you realize the three space also is a space of matrices, namely the space of, of traceless, means trace zero, mat emission matrices, and then unitary matrices acting by conjugation. Conjugation means it's in the linear algebra we use as a formula for the change of basis. So the conjugation is when you pre-compose with G and post or pre-compose with G inverse and compose with G. So that means because the composition goes when you apply matrices, you apply it from the other side from which you write. And so this is this is first you apply G inverse, then you apply your matrix back and you apply G. That's this 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 action preserves the condition of being permission, you preserve the determinant. The determinant such matrix X is, well, rather the minus determinant, the sum of squares of this XI. And so, and so since, since, my, since my action by conjugation preserves this quantity, it acts by rotation. This is the, this is the Euclidean distance, it acts by rotation of X. And, but this action, not every matrix X on tree, really, because the matrices, both the matrix plus and minus one, the plus and minus identity, the identity matrix commutes with every commutes means is permutable with every uh, with every matrix, and so is the minus identity. And so if we use identity or minus the identity as as our G in that formula, we, we get a trivial transformation, which is to say that this map that the identity the, the identity and minus the identity in SU2, the SU2 goes to the same identity element as a three, which means exactly gluing the opposite point, opposite point of a three so we glue. To get uh, to get the real projective free space, and in the same spirit, well, I'm I'm going. This is this is uh, the purpose of this discussion is to get maybe more familiar with the world of Lie groups before before we depart from it. Uh, but it is a it is beautiful map. So uh, I hope you I hope you don't find it to turn to this example. But you can also do something else instead of pre-composing. In post composing with the same matrix, you can use different matrix. So if you have a group, a group means remember in the first slide, a group means you can you can there is the inverse and there is composition. So if you have a group, you can act by the group one itself. The way you act it, you in fact by two copies of the group. You can pre-compose with the inverse of arbitrary element and post-compose with another element you want. This would be this would be an action on on a group on itself. And, and so since the group is if the group is three sphere, means three sphere and another copy of three sphere acts in this way on three sphere. And it acts, and it acts preserving brackets, it acts, it acts by rotation. So this gives you a map from S2 to cross S2 to S04 because rotation of three sphere this is the same as rotation of four space, and so it's S04. And so we find that S04 is you take the three sphere and the three sphere in your model out again by plus minus one, or rather. You mod out by by one and the matrix which is minus one minus. And you can in the same spirit you can find an example where SO6 is covered by SU4. But in general, if you go for general rotations and general unitary group, there will be different. And in fact, there is a complete classification of of uh, of, uh, of play groups. Or right now we're doing the compacted groups and the distribution of compacted groups is particularly nice. And so this classification of compact Lie groups is, 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 uh, is as beautiful as Mendeleev's periodic table. 
and uh, and the phrases that we discussed are take up about three fourths of that uh, three fourths of that um, of that specification. And that structural theory of, of Lie groups is um, it finds countless applications throughout natural sciences and and uh, of course within mathematics. And it's done in terms of some objects called root systems. And I will now attempt to try to attempt to explain what, what's a root system, how you think of a root system. First time. Louder. Louder. <laughs> you should have gotten an opera singer, not me. <laughs> well, the ones on the opening ceremony, they were great. <laughs> yeah, so now we go back. Again, what we do is we consider the action of the, so this the example, first with an example, again, is the usual, explaining what's the root system again. And so we now, we now, so maybe I'll remind you of this. Well, what's a conjugation? Conjugation was here where you multiply on the one side with G and on the other side by G inverse. So in particular, you in any group you can do that. And you can do it in, in the space here, as you do. And this will be some rotation. And this conjugation preserves preserves the identity matrix because if you write identity, what does it mean? You 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 write G something G and this means you write. Whatever something that was in a different base, the identity matrix is identity matrix in whatever base it is used with any base matrix in the world. And so that there is minus the identity matrix. And so this information preserves, if you think of the identity and the minus the identity, the north and south pole of a three sphere, that axis would be rotating around that axis, the two points. And it's a basic fact, they're generally true, that, that in fact every matrix can be conjugate to a diagonal matrix. And I'll write my diagonal matrix in this form. So this is, it has to be unitary with determining ones. I have this form. And the angle phi has the meaning, <coughs> and the angle phi has the meaning as just the, the radial distance for, of, of any given matrix from the North Pole. Okay, for rotate, I preserve the, the radial distance from the North Pole, and that radial distance is the eigenvalue, which I can, it's the eigenvalue when I, when I make my matrix diagonal with that file with the absolute value of that system. That makes sense. Except I've worked, I mean, I have to remind you that my pictures, all the circles mean spheres of different dimensions. Here the big sphere is three-dimensional, and the and the one in the in the horizontal circles, which look like the circle from the gym ball we had before, those are two-dimensional sphere, not one dimensional sphere. <clears throat> and, and and in the fact I said right here that the the conjugacy classes, therefore, in in my group are are two dimensional sphere filling my filling my three sphere as 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 the here as this here is also on this gym ball you see this this uh, this uh, lines of uh, of given uh, of latitude so that's uh, yeah, this is this is the picture one dimension up. And, and now we come back to this fun fact that, so what is the whole vibration that we have the picture over there? Is that we have, by definition, we have a map from the group to every conjugacy class, namely take, take, take a matrix G and set it to this conjugate of a given diagonal matrix. So this, this take G was in my group, so in the three sphere, and this is in the conjugacy class, so it's in the two sphere, so it's a map from three sphere to two sphere, and the fibers of that map, those are the those are the funny those are the funny circles in the face field depicted here. So those are those are the whole fibers. So. But this is this this is just for fun. But we, we this is slightly away from the main rotor follow. I just come back to the transparency of what before. Now I, I want to draw it slightly differently. I want to record. So in this in this picture, I have my radial distance from the North Pole. I measure it in phi, and if I now plot the picture, uh, so now my phi is my horizontal axis, and then, and then my for for since since phi is an angle, this will repeat periodical series. In fact, so it will repeat periodical series two phi, but there's something there's an added symmetry which makes it periodic. Right? So 
And so and so then and so then for every for every fly I have a homogeneity class with typically a two sphere, except sometimes it shrinks to I don't know, minus that. So I have the special value. So so the the, the summary of this fly is that the conjugacy classes are permeated in this case by one number, phi, that 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 I of which the ex exponential i phi is the is the is the eigenvalue or phi is the distance, the angular distance from, or I should have said angular. Did I say right? Uh, angular distance from the north pole. And and I have a certain special values, namely the multiples of phi, when this conjugacy class is instead of being spheres shrink to a Another visual image for you to have is that I, I'm going to express my group, which was something as a slice. And I was thinking of maybe putting a slice picture of a sliced sausage, but I found a better analogy, namely put the frames of a sheep. And so the group, the, the, uh, this is, uh, this is uh, <coughs> a wooden sheep consists of this, consists of this, uh, of this, of this frame. Except, well, and then which you can also think of, a, you know, also compare with the frames of uh, the frames of a movie. But the, the analogy that I say here is not is not perfect because because the frames of a sheep or the frames of a movie they are labeled by one number, whereas to label the conjugacy classes in the general group we may need more numbers. This is in fact the numbers, not the number of numbers we need to label conjugacy class for the rank of the group. We'll talk about this in a second. And so for instance, if we want the rotation of the fourth case, and every rotation of fourth case is conjugate to something that preserves you know, the automatic of this form. If they have two angles, phi one and phi two, we decided the rotation of fourth space is just is just SU2 cross SU2 modulus some CBL. And so and so the the case conjugacy class is going to be just S2, well, S2 for one and S2 for another, unless one of this, unless one of these phi i's happen to be multiple of phi. So in this case, the picture is just, as mathematicians say, direct product or Cartesian product of the pictures we had before. So it's the two numbers, and we have a Cartesian product of these hyperplanes. So it's just you get the, this, uh, this, uh, this kind of uh, grade school, you know, you have this college, whatever, some, some, some kind of math, the same thing like a math, looks like a math paper. Uh, so the fact that, but, and then the next example, if I take about, talk about SU3, the, the three, two by two unitary matrix is determined one, every size is conjugate to a matrix, again, to a diagonal matrix. And then since it's determined as one, the sum of this angle five has to be equal to zero. And then when is the, when is the corresponding conjugacy class is less than, less than, less than expected somehow. When is the corresponding frame is, is different from, from the generic one? It's exactly when two of these numbers are equal mod to phi. And then if you think about three numbers that sum up to zero, and when two of them are equal mod to phi, you get this iconic picture of this, of this uh, tessellation of this electrical triangle. That's maybe the, one of the very first iconic pictures you see in, 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 in the leaf theory course. And in fact, we put it on the, a couple of years ago at a very nice midrash in Jerusalem, and we put it on the on the poster of that. And that's of course there's many things I can put. And so, uh, if you if 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 this talks uh, awakens your curiosity about the subject, this is one of the the, the proceedings or whatever the videos from that midrash is uh, is one one source to which you can turn. Um, now, when we talk. Talk about so rank two, we're in the plane. I can draw this in the plane. In rank three, we're in the space. It's hard to draw uh, spatial tessellation, but I can draw what this thing looks like near the origin. And uh, I have two groups of rank three here, SU4 and SO7. And for them, the situation looks like that. So this is like that. You can imagine this are very, uh, in higher dimension, this are very, you know, very nice. Um, it's hardly you know, difficult to represent pictures. And then <clears throat> I just want to stress that, so this is that the groups are some of the most symmetric. Groups are this extremely symmetric object, but also the conjugate classes in the group are some of the um, some of the most symmetric geometric shapes in the world. And we already talked about 
Andre gets across the thing that we do and that forms this form the steer that shrinks that shrink to uh, that shrinks to a point where the body happens to be an empty. And then as you do have uh, a brother or, or a sister, uh, sibling, which is SL2R, the, the, the group of two by two real matrices with the same one. And there the conjugacy classes, depending, depending on, on the trace of the matrix, they look either as a hyperboloid to one sheet or the hyperboloid to three sheets, or, uh, or there's a very special one, namely, if you talk in SL2R, there are matrices which, in addition to the identity matrix, there are also matrices with eigenvalues. And they have both eigenvalues equal to one, and but still they're not diagonal. They have this, this, this mathematician called Jordan Law. And this one, so this, the ones, the unipotent matrices together with the identity form a cone, the singular thing that sits between the hyperboloid of, of uh, two sheets and the hyperboloid of one sheet. So, um, uh, maybe the best, in fact, maybe the best is to think about the corresponding complex group. So these are, so I, I said the SU2 and S, SL2R are two siblings, where the, the mother group that is SL2C, the group of complex matrices, so, uh, two by two complex matrices. And there the conjugacy classes, they just look like, in general, like complex spheres, which is a real manifold. So a complex sphere is something, complex sphere, is as a real manifold, as a manifold of twice the dimension, which is, which is, um, which you can identify with the tangent or the cotangent bundle to the original sphere. And so there's something given in, in, equa in equations like this one, where, where, uh, where I find and three are complex numbers. And then there is, among them, there's a singular one which corresponds to, again, to the equation and the identity, and that's in fact a cone, cone of that. And this happens when the two eigenvalues can. It's, it's, it's a picture just like we see in, in the, in the hyperboloid case, except that everything's complex. And in fact, so, so we, as we look at this, if you will, if you want to say anatomy, this is like anatomy of a leader. And if we, if we want, it's clear, so I think this is something, this is something, uh, uh, mathematicians are uh, very common in come very common in, in mathematics is that when you look at the picture you your your or both your eye and your mind goes not to the place where it looks regular you, you always you always go to the most singular part of the picture and clearly the, the most important thing here is that cone and in fact you can describe the rest of the picture as a, as a deformation of that cone so if you have a if i say mathematics have this Notion deformation. They have, a, have some geometric shape. You can ask, what are they? In some, in some sense, what are all the nearby shapes? And all the shapes nearby to a singular cone are are given here. And in fact, as we look, as we look away from that cone, they will exactly fit the picture. This can be all formalized, but I think it's not not a, maybe it's not in the public talk. It's not place for that. And. Uh, and I, I, I showed you this periodic table of, of Lie group uh, a couple of transparencies before. And the, um, this has, uh, it, it's a very powerful um, result. But it's also a result that says, well, this is it. There's no more you want to use. So if there's some, if there's some applications you have in mind, well, you know, Lie groups are not going to help you. This really groups is not, um, is not, uh, uh, this is it. This, the, the world is we know all of them, and that their world is it. This, this world is inhabited. And that, but of course, there are problems, and it's particularly in, in that it are not solved by the groups. And, and in particular, a constant source of problems in mathematics is for mathematical physics. And for our friends in mathematical physics are very good at providing both the motivation and inspiration for us mathematicians to, uh, to, to look beyond the worlds that we inhabited to the worlds that we haven't yet inhabited. So, um, and so now I, I just want to, since it is kind of an important point here, I want to emphasize it again, is that the point of view that you should view, you should take the group as, as, 
as foliated by the formations of a certain special, in fact, singular geometric shape that, that has further qualification as quarto. Uh, it, is, it is important for technical discussion, but maybe we'll discuss now. But that is a very important point of view. And, and in particular, that singular shape, there's a certain, there's a certain, um, a certain set of algebraic standard, so not algebraic, there's a set of standard mathematical questions you can ask about the state action. And, and, uh, and we'll talk a little bit about that later. But what I want to say is, well, now we're going to, now we're going to close our eyes and jump into, into this, into the outer space. So I invite you to jump with me. So uh, one is actively explores the idea that the correct analog of that very special conjugacy class F that is something has a very, very long name, and I'll, I'll spend some time explaining it. Uh, so, uh, <clears throat> math, mathematical physics, uh, it, its goal is to describe the world around us. The world around us can be described in different modalities, if you want. You can, you can, uh, you can, there's a classical mechanics that deals with, uh, that deals with, uh, Objects having a definite position, definite velocity, and so forth. This could be, you can also have, uh, there's also in classical mechanics, you can have uh, some, some uh, like a solid uh, has uh, also some spatial extent, but every solid has a definite position. If you bend, if you bend something, that again, has a, a definite force, a definite position. But the, but the world around us is not classical, it's quantum. And the world around us fluctuates. And so uh, quantum field theory, field theory or statistical field theory deals with this fluctuating object that also have some spatial and temporal uh, Most things, most things around us, in fact, I mean, everything around us, in fact, is like this. Every object you see in the room, in fact, on a very small scale fluctuates or a large scale fluctuates. And so then you can ask, about given such system, you can ask about its space of what's called vacuum or ground state or Gibbs state. And what does it mean? It means it means a state of the system that can that can that can exist in infinite volume for infinite time. This is, I mean, our lives are our, our world is bounded, our lives are finite. It's very hard to contemplate for us things that exist in infinite volume for infinite time, but mathematicians, mathematicians like to study it for the reason that that those kind of things, in fact, in fact, in some sense, dominate. I mean, if you're if you're uh, most things around us and some are in some steady state, albeit approximate. Like the the were the you know the air in this room, it's on some scale it fluctuates. Tremendously, but on the scale that we perceive, we, we, we only, like when I'm talking to you, I'm sending you tiny, tiny excitations over, over that ground state of, of the air. Great. These excitations are important, like, but, but uh, what fills the world is, is mainly from the point of point. But what fills the world is more or less the vacuum, and then there's some excitations. The space of all possible vacuum, the, the space of all possible steady states, that is a, this is a, that is a mathematical well defined object. And it's interesting to study. And it's interesting to study even in very simple combinatorial models. Like, for instance, I spent a lot of my life studying uh, models like, like, like the, this random tiling, that, or you can think of this as a random tiling of a surface by. Uh, by three kinds of one by, or you could think of it as a projection of a random surface in 3D. And then the kind of dynamics you can you can imagine uh, that, well, you know, for instance, what I can what I can do is I take one of these little cubes you see in the picture and I flip it. So it's a it's reasonable kind of dynamics. And then and then this turns out that it's a, it's, a, it's a remarkable recent theorem of uh, of a young mathematician called Amor Agarwal is that in fact this space of deep states, I mean, that's this, the steady or the, 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 the ground state in this picture, is in fact parameterized by, by, 
by two parameters, namely the density of each kind of time. So if I have a, if this is an infinite space, then, then there's a, you can ask you can ask it to have a given density of tiles of each color, since they have to be this are three numbers that sum up to one, so that's two degrees of freedom. And that is the description of the of the space of the space of, of ground space of the deep space here. But this is this is not the model that we when going to talk about, we're going to talk about things which more which much more much more supersymmetric than there is this model here. And and one way to 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 you know, mathematically talk about the spaces X. Typically there is some there's some functional, which people call different names, like free energy. And the space of the system that says sits in the in in, in, the, in the ground space is first of all you you minimize that functional, minimize your free energy. And then you may have to mod out, so this is this is uh, this is just a, just a picture of a of some potential that my, what it might look like. So first, you sit in the bottom of a certain of a certain function uh, that measures has goes under many different names in many different contexts. Let's say let's say we call it free energy. Now first, you sit at the bottom of that function, and secondly, you may have to mod out by some 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 symmetries that are that correspond to physically the same system. So this is a gauge symmetry. So. So the space X, uh, well, in any given problem, it's very hard to identify, with, very hard to concretely identify. Then, however, in, in, um, you can you can uh, you can imagine that uh, that a large uh, large fraction of answers will have this form. You see, there is a certain there is a certain function over 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 specific kinds of since we're talking about very specific situations. And then there's a, some group of symmetries of that function by which we model. Means we, we identify things that are by. So that's that's the specific. Text. Sorry, I spent a lot of time on this slide, but but it is we, we did make a we did make a leap into some some completely new world. And so I tried to explain what it is. And you can ask what's the very first example, which is not has not to do with the group. The very first example, if I take many copies of a complex plane. And then I have many copies. So, so instead of a, you can think of it as a many copies of a, of a complex plane. You can think of a many complex box that can, box can sit in some point on a complex plane. And then I mod out by all possible per permutations. It means I identify all points at different by permutations. And I then follow this box at uh, different by permutations. And so that is, that is some X would be some singular. Some singular Poisson variety since it comes from we take a standard symplectic structure in C2 and then this produces a Poisson structure in that portion. Or you can take it has a remarkable resolution, it's called the field of single point. But this is just one of many, many, many new possibilities. In fact, there are whole galaxies of new possibilities. And I think it's uh, if I were to advocate to young people to fly to distant galaxies to inhabit new worlds, maybe I would be not so many followers, but uh, if I were to advocate to young mathematicians, and especially those interested in Lie theory, to go and explore all these new worlds, maybe this is a more interesting proposition. I hope it's more appealing to you. Um, and then I want to say maybe a few things about, uh, since we, uh, we're closing on to the end of the, on the live lecture, that I want to say a few things about, uh, I did say that um, what's important about this X are, Things that are important about this X, one is is a quantization, that is to say, non-commutative deformation of this X. That's one important thing. And another important thing is to study maps from from um, maps from some other two-dimensional, let's say, for marine and surface. And so, so uh, there's a there's a maps from marine surface to uh, to such X. Uh, and and the reason for that is is my, my, you know, maybe uh, an example I'd like to give, very often give this, is uh, if you have an understanding, so maybe, maybe like, so what is the weather map? A weather map is a map, is a map of the, of some region here, here in Europe, that may record temperature and pressure. What is temperature and pressure? Temperature and pressure, 
are coordinates on the space of ground states for a gas. And there, if you were talking about ground states for a gas like air, then, then, then of course you can measure many different things. You can measure, you can measure uh, whatever. You can, if you have, uh, if you have a uh, sufficiently, sufficiently, um, sufficiently uh, sensitive, sufficiently sensitive um, equipment, you can measure many, many characteristics of a gas. But, but things called equations of state will tell you that all of them. If, if the gas is in, in a good state, then all of them will be determined by just two variables, namely the temperature and the pressure, if we're in, if we're in this um, equilibrium state, which is another way to, to name it. And so, but now we're never in the perfect equilibrium, the, the temperature and pressure vary across this room, for instance, but maybe not, very, you have to be, you have to measure it very precisely to notice, but across the surface of the Earth, of course it's measured, so this means Across the surface of the Earth, we have something a physicist would call a modulated vacuum. It means it's it's a state which is kind of locally a vacuum, but parameters of that vacuum change slowly from point to point. And so then this means that you have a weather map is a map from your space, which is the Earth. And if it's if you if it's, you take a dynamical, if, you, if if instead of having static picture, I, I gave you one of this. And dynamical weather pictures. That will be also a map from the space and time, the space time, to where? To the space of steady state. So the idea is that low, the idea is that low energy states of some complicated physics of some fluctuating system, you can describe as maps from space or the space time to the space of to the space of vacuum, to the space of steady state, to the space of time. So therefore, functions from, since we, I, I told you we're studying quantum field theory in two plus one dimensions, so it means our space time, space is two dimensional, and there's also one dimensional time. We can, we can approximate, we can approximate our, our physical system as, as a theory of maps from, from the space, which is some two dimensional surface, you can think of as a Riemann surface, maps to the space. And then, and so once once we do this, then then many many familiar quantum mechanical quantities such as index, I think a lot, such as index of an evolution operator, they, they can be mathematical defined, can be computed. And so I want to just mention there's something if if, if we study maps to the Hilbert scheme of points from 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 uh, from a two-dimensional surface, that is. That is one of the cornerstones of the kind of thing that I've been spending a lot of time doing this, this Donald and Thomas theory. Maybe this is too late in the talk. I have one minute left. And so I have to uh, conclude by uh, by the role, by remark about the role of the roots. Is that what is, so this, this deformation, I told you that the leg roof will be swept by the deformation of some particular, uh, some particular conjugate mass. And so what is, what is that deformation now? These deformations are just parameters of a physical system, something we can, something which is you know, in our hands in the laboratory to adjust. So for instance, we can, for example, we can, uh, we, something we can, um, for, example, for instance, we can make to vary in time or over space. And then, in fact, if you, if you, if you really think about it, then, then the, the, the rules I had before, they had in fact two different roles and I have them here on the transparency, but maybe I won't read it since um, I have about four, I have about one minute left. But here in this, in this world, uh, they, they diverge. So in, in, in this year, there's something called Langlands duality, which is, uh, which you have to be, you have to be very good, you have to be a good Lee theory student to really appreciate the difference between a Lee group and a Langlands dual, but in the in the world I'm describing now, the difference between between these two sets, which would be called root and core root in Lee theory, that difference becomes very dramatic because in the space of this this two this two hyperplane arrangement, these are the arrangements in two kinds of sets of parameters of my physical theory, and in principle the ranks, that is to say the dimensions on two sides, need not be. 
But there's still some remarkable language geology that takes them as well. As if it's too um, and uh, now uh, I'm more or less on time. And I want to say uh, one more thing is that since I told you that these walls in the space of parameters they correspond to some values of external parameters of a physical theory for which something special happens. And so then in particular, what we can do is we can, in, in a lab or at least in our Duncan experiment, we can try to make this parameter vary across space. So we have a, a one value on one side, one here, region of space, and another value in on the region of space. And so then the physical system will have to somehow, somehow, you know, live with these two values. It's a, I, I, uh, when I have more time giving this kind of talks, I sometimes uh, say, well, uh, think of a, of a boundary between two states and then how much, uh, you know, how much, you know, how, how it creates an interesting interface between two different, two different, uh, two different uh, ways in which a human society can function. So it's something like this, it's an interface. It's some operator, which tells you, so since, since you have some physics on one side, physics on the other side, there's an operator, an operator, an operator which tells you how to, what sort of things happen in those things. And that operator, this, this sort of operator generalized all the good stuff from the Lee theory, such as bio groups, Hecke algebra, power matrices, and so forth, and underline the word group. And remember from the very beginning, we wanted Lee theory without group. And this happens here too. We, we, we get rid of the group. We also get, we're going to get rid of the bio group because these transformations do not form a group. Just go from, you go from one compartment to the next compartment. This is something a mathematician call a group point. It's not a group. This is this arrangement. They don't have the kind of symmetry. The the arrangement in the equilateral triangles. They have this remarkable symmetry. You could take a triangle to a triangle. These are not symmetric. These are just these are just really these are, these are really go from compartment to compartment. So in that sense, in that sense, the group is also is also gone out of this out of this picture. So, so okay. So then I'll leave you with the. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Okunkov. Uh, it's a very interesting talk. Uh, now, uh, we still have uh, a few minutes for uh, questions. Uh, we uh, enabled uh, chat sessions, so I'm kindly asking everyone to mm -hmm either uh, raise their hand to uh, pose the question live or to write the question in a Q&A session. 